All right, everybody, welcome back. We've got a massive show today, and I can say from the bottom of my heart, I was right. I saw this coming from miles away. I knew today would be the day. I might be the only one that predicted that this was going to happen today, the way exactly the way it happened. There's only a few of us that knew about it, and I would happen to be one of them. Yeah, just kidding. Uh, some of the biggest news in all of golf, as far as we can remember, not just folks playing well or playing poorly. Um, there was a massive um, news break today. As soon as we woke up, phones started going crazy. News started going nuts. Uh, Live and the PGA Tour have merged. Um, there's a lot more coming out as you know every second of the day, and we're learning more about all of the details. Um, you know, from the meetings that took place over the last couple of days. And with that said, we still don't know more than 5% of what's really going to happen going forward. There's been a ton of speculation. There's been a ton of anger. There's been a ton of frustration and funny memes that have gone out, but there's a ton to talk about. Um, literally nobody saw this coming. Uh, I, at least, you know, there's some pretty interesting Donald Trump tweets from 2022 that kind of laid this out <laughs> almost to the T, but Nailed Other it. than that, none of, none of the rest of us saw this coming, at least in this fashion or this quickly. Um, so, I, you know, there's just so much to unpack. And the fact that um, it went down the way it did, there's, there's um, a lot of really pissed off people. And, and probably with, um, they probably have every right to be pissed off. But, you know, it, there's still so much more information to come out over the next couple of days. I, you know, it's almost seems too early like the, you know once this rage settles down and the and the money gets figured out it maybe they won't be so mad because something something different happened but it really remains to be seen um and i guess the moral of the story for all this is money talks regardless of anything else money talks um so you know will i don't, I don't know where you want to start probably from the very first inkling of news that we got this morning but um you know it's uh it's, you know, let's just go through it and kind of get everyone's impression of what's, you know, what's to come and, and how they feel right now, what, you know, what the writing on the wall is for the PGA and live and, and, uh, um, you know, everyone else that's involved in this, because, you know, we're, we're getting a lot of info even trickling in by the second. So. Yeah, it's, it's crazy. Uh, it's been a ridiculous day in the world of golf. I think you know, when I woke up this morning, I thought the things we were going to be covering on this podcast were, you know, longest day in golf, uh, Victor Hovland winning a designated event and then going out and caddying for one of his friends, uh, Rose Zhang winning her first professional start, um, you know, a lot of U.S. Open chatter. I was ready to be asking Glenn about LACC and getting ready for all of that. And then by what was it? 9.30 a.m. It was on CNBC that uh, Liv and the tour were merging and that, you know, threw all those plans out the window. So congratulations to Victor Hovland. Congratulations to Rose Zhang. Uh, I'm sure you'll both have many more victories that we talk about on this podcast. But for today, um, I mean, I was yeah. floored. I was, <laughs> and so was Rio. Um, I was saying to Glenn before we started, like, I didn't, I was like checking every account to make sure the tweets weren't fake because it seems so unbelievable. You know, it was in March that Monaghan had said, there's no possibility of a merger ever. So something pretty significant changed on that front. I can tell you that much. Um, and then I felt like with every piece of information and every comment on it that came out, stuff just got weirder. Like you started seeing the tweets, uh, roll out from players, whether it was Morikawa, um, you know, saying, you know, everyone thought yesterday was the longest day in golf or Mackenzie Hughes saying nothing like finding out through Twitter that we're merging with a tour we said we'd never do that with, or Byung Hyun An saying that uh, Hideki could have bought Spirit Airlines if he had signed with the Live Tour, um, all of which were great in their own right. But, um, you know, I think for me, my overwhelming reaction to today is what Kevin Van Valkenburg from No Laying Up, formerly ESPN, said, which is, and I am quoting, I don't know how any player who turned down live money and stayed with the PGA could believe anything Jay Monahan says ever again. <laughs> he made them take every arrow, hit in an office for a year, and then double-cross them on CNBC. 
Like at the end of the day, if you are Rory McIlroy, especially, or any of the PGA tour guys, and you turn down, you know, I I don't know what's beyond generational wealth, but that's what they turned out. F you money. Maybe we'd call it. Mm -hmm. Uh, And you turn that down because you felt loyalty to the tour or were convinced to be loyal to the tour or you believed in, you know, its future as a player run organization or whatever it might've been. And you, you know, stuck around and toiled and struggled to keep your card. And now all of those guys who didn't are going to be welcomed back, welcomed back, presumably keep their money. We don't know about that, but I haven't heard anything to the contrary. Uh, This new entity has no incentive to make you whole, so to speak. Um, because there's now no competition. So would it be nice for them to throw Rory a hundred million dollars because he turned it down? Yeah. But why would they do it? I don't know. They there's, they don't have any reason to, um, and leadership completely lied to you the entire time. And that's why, you know, it's not surprising when it came out that, uh, you know, from Johnson Wagner that, uh, in the player meeting, there was a 90-10 split, negative positive on the news and a standing ovation when they called for new PGA Tour leadership. Um, I think it's ultimately good for the game of golf not to be split this way, not to have the drama, not to have some of the best players in the world, you know, including the the most recent major champion and two of the three most recent major champions um, playing on a different tour from the rest of the guys. I think that's great. But the way this was handled, it was absolutely mangled. And especially if you're one of the guys who was out there acting as, you know, effectively a mouthpiece for Jay Monahan, I can't blame you if you feel like you were, you know, swindled, cheated, lied to. And, um, you know, I don't know what the tour does to win back the, the trust of those guys. I mean, look, look what he did to Rory. We've been saying for a long time now, It's not fair for Rory, Tiger, and some of these others. I know it's a player's league. I get all that. But it's not fair to put them in the spot of the commissioner and and have to figure out how to play in these major events, how to get their game right, and still take all these questions, bring all the hate on themselves, and, you know, and then expect to, you know, um, expect to at least have the backing of the PGA when when you're putting yourself out there as the – the voice of the the soldier and there and there's nothing. I mean, they just basically got the door shut on them, thrown out in the cold and said, Hey, thanks for all that. This is great. But you know, this is, we're, we're going another way now. You were wrong. We're right. And I, I don't know. I just feel like this is why people don't trust big corporations. It's just, they, it all comes down to money, uh, you know, regardless of what, however you shake it out, it goes down, down to the money. And when, when professional athletes say, you know, follow the money because the the leagues or the teams don't care about you when you get hurt or when you are taken out of the picture or when it's time for them to move on. This is just a perfect example of that, right? Like it's just, if they all took the money and then made this deal happen regardless, they'd all be a lot wealthier and, and, you know, have a, probably a lot less um, angst as far as the way that they've treated other golfers, the way they've treated the press, the way they've treated, you know, the, you know, their, their fellow PGA members and non-members, like there's just, it's just too much. Um, I feel like the PGA didn't take the stand it needed to take um, and then back itself up. It just. Uh, like I tweeted you guys this morning, money greater than fake moral outrage. So yeah. there's so much about this that was just grandstanding and you know, you know, any corporation, right? Like I said, this is big corporation stuff. It's it's all about the money. You just follow the money. Um, if you're if what if you're Ricky Fowler, right? You've been struggling for the past few years. Yeah, he passed up what a hundred, maybe hundred fifty million minimum. Easily jump there and gone and played for a year, and then come back and you know been able to reapply for PGA Tour status. Um, it's just interesting. I you know we don't know the genesis of this, but I still think. The PGA Tour made a strategic mistake in not coming through on their promise with a strategic alliance with the DP World Tour. And I have a feeling the DP World Tour said, hey, you know what? And I think I've said this before on the podcast. What if we go work with Liv? <laughs> yeah, you have mentioned that. Outside the United States, that is, it's like, you know, the rest of the world. 
and I think Jay Monahan's hand was, you know, it was, he was, it was forced and it's, you know, the, the big winners, you know, we always said that, that the game of golf needs some sort of resolution to this thing. It did. And Greg Norman finally gets his world tour. <laughs> oh my gosh. It's, it's Greg Norman. Who's the winner after all, everyone who's saying Phil's the winner is looking yep. about two decades too late. It took um, Greg 40 years, but he yep. finally gets his world tour. <laughs> <laughs> Um, I, I will say, though, one, one thing that people are forgetting, I, Jay, I think, was in a really tough spot. I, now, I don't agree with everything he said. I don't agree with the way he handled some of the things. But when you're put in that spot and you're, and you're under attack by, you know, another entity, where they're grabbing some of your best players, whether that's your workers or whatever it is, if you're that corporate head, sometimes you're holding on for dear life and you're just trying to figure things out and you... You know, you you make moves that you think are right at the time, whatever. And then you, as the situation changes, you know, you've got to change with it. So again, I don't, do I think he did everything right? 100% not, you know, but I don't, I don't know if, if there, if there was a lot of other people in those spots, people that think they're really smart and they know the business world and they know how, the, you know, the PGA should work and, and they can supposedly see into the future. Uh, I I don't think it was as easy as a task <laughs> as people are making it out to be. I mean, I, honesty is one thing, um, but I do think he was up against it with, with something that the PGA just hadn't seen before, right? Uh, a new outsider coming in with pockets as deep as can be, you know, tantalizing, you know, pulling players out left and right for, you know, with a really big um, carrot that's out there. I just don't think, I don't think he was put in a, in a really good spot either. So it's just, it's really easy to criticize. And I, again, I don't want to misconstrue this and I'm team J or whatever. I'm not team anybody. I just think it it's not as easy as it looks um, sometimes. So, so Craig, what's tough about that for me is, you know, that falls back on what I think is this fallacy that I'm hearing a lot, which is, Oh, you know, man, at the end of the day, there was just nothing they could do. Um, you know, the the PIF has such deep pockets, they they have unlimited money. What were what was the tour supposed to do? They're a they're a nonprofit and they're up against this, you know, six hundred billion dollar. I'm I'm not buying that. Like someone said, you know, you can't fight the bankroll. Someone said to me that you can't fight the bankroll that the the PIF has. Well, the, the thing to me is the PGA Tour was fighting it. They did fight it. And as far as anyone was concerned, whether it's tournament attendance, tournament viewership, literally the quality of golf that is played on either tour, the PGA Tour was winning. Yes, Brooks Kepka, who when he left the PGA Tour and today is one of the best players in the world, just won a major. That is incontrovertibly true. But I also don't think there's really anyone out there who seriously watches the game of golf who was looking at live saying it's a better product than the pga tour so i'm not willing to buy again i think this is a good result ultimately to reunify the game of golf i think the way that it was done was terrible but to excuse the way that it was done because the pga tour's hands were tied or it wasn't capable of competition i think is so ridiculous because as far as i'm concerned the pga tour was beating live up and down every single week um and we all saw it i mean we didn't see live because it was on the cw app hidden between unreleased episodes of vampire diaries but we all saw which product was better and the idea that the pj tour's hands were tied because of all this money that live had as it's at its disposal just doesn't fly with me no but but think about what you're saying then right so you're just saying that the pga product is that much better the talent pool is that much better they were doing everything in their power to fight this this massive bankroll and doing it well yeah so what changed so what changed is the fact that and uh, again this is all just speculation they were they were probably going to lose something in the court of law right something was going to get exposed. Like, they were up against it where they had to make a change or make a decision and they had to probably make it fast before they lost every bit of leverage that they possibly could have that's the only thing that makes sense in the you know as far as why they did what they did and, and how it was done. Uh, again, I don't know that for a fact. I don't know anything about that stuff. But if you just look at it logically, 
you're right. I mean, they were they were almost at the point where, man, if we can just outlast live for another year, they'll be, you know, they'll be so frustrated because they still don't have any sponsors. They still don't have any viewership. They, you know, the product hasn't changed enough, evolved enough to catch up with us, blah, 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 blah. You know, that, that waiting game all of a sudden very quickly turned into a panic mode of, shoot, let's make a deal real quick. And let's not bring anybody else into it because we don't have time to debate this. We got to, we got to make this now. I don't need a thousand people to tell me what's right and what's wrong. Let's just do something quickly. Right. That's essentially what happened at the end of the day. And it's why they kept everyone out. So there's something that we don't know and something we probably will never know um, to a certain degree on why the decision was made and why it was made so quickly. Which is an interesting question. It brings us to an interesting place, which is uh, there is this speculation that the DOJ was going to uncover something or decide something that the PGA Tour didn't like in this ongoing antitrust litigation. My question is, if you have two parties that want to merge that for the last year have both been contending that the other is acting anti-competitively and monopolistically, do we really expect that those parties are going to be allowed to merge? Like one of the first texts I got this morning from a family friend was, holy crap, the old antitrust lawyer in me wonders whether this raises bigger antitrust issues than the ones that arose before. Um, adding that a player could argue that two competing leagues was the best way to maximize income to play one against the other. I think that's all, that, that all at least seems true on its face. And Joseph Lamagna, who does a great golf newsletter and uh, was a former coworker of mine, uh, tweeted, you know, the DOJ has the opportunity to do the funniest thing ever, which is have us all freak out about this live PGA tour merger for a day, a week, a month, however long it is, and then not let it happen. Like I remind everyone that AT&T and T-Mobile are still two separate companies. Yeah. Yeah. You'd think that they'd have a little bit of insight before all this goes public, but there's really not right. I mean, they, like they can't have it for sure because that takes time. They have to announce what they would like to be the deal and see what happens. So I don't know. Yeah, it'd be really interesting. I just hope that Jay Monahan has stock in Sherwin Williams because he has painted himself into so many corners <laughs> over the years. I mean, really, from the time when Phil said you guys are sitting on so much money and he said, no, that's a lie. And then, wow, a couple of months later when Phil and the guys start to jump, hey, we found all this money. But I think you're hitting on it. There's the probably had to come because once you start a lawsuit and you get into discovery and those books are opened up, then who knows what both sides are hiding. Yeah, it, it couldn't be good, right? I mean, yeah. at the end of the day, no matter how you shake it out, it couldn't have been yeah. like, oh, this is stuff we want to share with the general public and <laughs> all our players. And all. Like, there's, there's probably a lot of stuff in there. They're just like, yeah, this is going to look really bad. Let's end this now. Let's end all litigation against us, against each other, and let's just figure out how to move on very quickly and shake hands. <laughs> um, you know, it, you're right, Will. Like, they're, they keep making this don't worry about what's going on right now worry about 10 years from now what's this gonna yeah. look like 10 years from now yeah. i mean crap they couldn't even get through two years of of you know competing business so 10 years seems like forever um and i i just i don't know i i feel in my heart of hearts that um you know the the deal had to get done for a slew of reasons that we're just never going to fully know or understand and they'll they'll brush it off and I'm sure they'll, they'll try to pay some people off that were, when I say pay people off, like try to make people somewhat whole that they felt were wronged in some of this. I don't know how or, or what, what they do, but I saw a great quote today. If any of this is true, within six players, there was $2.1 billion of money left on the table um, for not going to live, right? Yeah. I, don't know how I mean, it was a billion for Tiger alone, right? Or 700 was, million or whatever yeah, it was? Seven to 800 million. And this is all, you know, guesswork or rumorville, but, you know, uh, if, if that's even close to true, it's a lot of money. Yeah. Um, so, and then, you know, what do you go, do? Go through the records of anybody that live ever made an offer to and say, yep, we would make you whole, we would make you whole. And, I mean, in reality, I would I'd think be about forging money that... emails if I'm like, <laughs> yeah. you know, who, whoever like number 120 on the money list from last year, I'd be I'd be forging an email from uh, the PIF saying, 
Oh, hey, we'd like to offer you $150 million to join our tour. We think you'd be great. But if you think about it, the, they're going to they're gonna have this massive influx of cash right now, too. So hopefully, at the end of the day, when the dust settles, if, if all this stuff goes through, the players are well taken care of, you know, and there's they're, – they're, they've got to still look at their, the Corn Ferry Tours and the LPGA and yeah, the caddies are taking care of, the whole thing. Like, if you're going to do it, do it right take advantage of the fact that you now totally embarrassed the league, each other, and yeah. kind of dragged all the fans through the mud for the last year and a half and, you know, make some of this right best you can. One thing I do want to mention before we move on to what I think is the best outcome of all of this, at least the best immediate outcome is um, according to Kyle Porter in a post he just put up on cbsports.com, uh it was reported that three weeks ago like right before the byron nelson the pga tour turned down a deal from raytheon to be the title sponsor because raytheon sells military equipment to saudi arabia and now we're three weeks out from that and they're merging with live so it makes me wonder like were people not saying anything about the PGA or about this at the PGA championship because no one really knew anything at the time? I don't think so because we're pretty sure that this happened over the course of two months. So I'm, I'm just like shocked and baffled by every step the PGA tour has made in this process. And I, Again, good for the game of golf at the end of the day, but it's hard for me to try to put myself in the shoes of any of those players who were in this meeting where there was a standing ovation when there was a call for new leadership and feel like those guys are wrong. Yeah, it's just crazy that the PGA Tour over the past years is puffing their chest. We're the superior product. We're number one. You guys will never be a threat to us. You guys are morally you know, rep reprehensible. And then here we are. Oh, you know what? Let's all get together and make a lot of money. Yeah. <laughs> But, you know, in reality, too, just the fact that they were turned down as sponsors could have been for a thousand reasons. If they knew that they were working on this deal, they probably didn't want to pick up any more paperwork or sponsorship until they some of the dust settled, whatever. It may not have been that may have been an easy out to, to say, oh, this is probably why they didn't accept that. Like, you know, as far as rumor, but there may have been a thousand other reasons, too. So that's what I think they're going to have to deal with now. What's what's true and what's, you know um what is this absolute fake news that's coming through or with guesswork and rumors and you know kind of what glenn said earlier the the fake anger as opposed to the real anger right the, what they got to do now is figure out how to get that 90 percent of folks that feel that their pga needs to change leadership to all right let's let's start to skew those numbers the other way let's get everyone calm let's you know start to describe what we're thinking and why we did this that's that's got to be their main focus. Forget everybody else. Forget the media. Forget the fans. Just get the players back on track first. Because um, you know having folks sit out the U.S. Open because they're pissed off is not going to be a good look. Yeah, that would be really bad. But on the topic of really good golf outcomes from this, Glenn, did they just save the Ryder Cup? Uh, they did. <laughs> I think now now the captains are free to pick whoever they want. You know, you know, go, you know, you can you can bring back Sergio and Poulter if you want to. We can the United States can put on Phil if they want to. So that is that is freed up, you know, uh both sides to do what's best for the Ryder Cup. Because if the Ryder Cup without the best players would not have been the Ryder Cup. And now we get Henrik Stenson maybe can be a captain again, which he was yeah, of course yeah. supposed to be this year. Yeah. Um I feel like Europe has more fences to mend than the U S Oh, I definitely. Like, I feel like the U S like Bill's always been kind of the outlier, you know, um, maybe a little quirky with his personality and, and what have you. I, I don't know. Um, but you know, I, I feel like there wasn't this go to war against, you know, DJ and Brooks and, you know, Bryson and whatever. It's just kind of is what it is. Um, but I feel like Europe's taking some shots at each other along the way. Um, even as of last week, they were still, mm -hmm. you know, taking some shots at each other. Uh, I feel like for a group that used to be super, super tight, it'd be interesting to see what happens with them over the next couple weeks or months. 
Have we even yeah. heard what this looks like? Does Live go on with their 54 hole format and now the players can go to the PGA Tour and the European DP World Tour as they want, just the way that an American player can go to the DP World Tour or vice versa for certain but events? Nothing's or- been disclosed yet. All they kept saying in the interview was, more to come, more to come. We just wanted to get the news out that the merger was happening and that we're all starting to work together under one parent umbrella. Um, and there's still a lot to work through, but we'll work through it very quickly, blah, blah, blah. So they, this was just, again, I think they could only keep the news quiet for so long. Let's get ahead of that, make the public yeah. announcement, let the outrage happen or the cheers happen, whatever it is, mm-hmm. and then figure out what to do from there. But um, yeah, so Glenn, two, two things on that, uh, both of these coming from Kyle Porter tweets. Uh, the first one live player I talked to today said players haven't heard what's going to happen to live or the team concept as mm-hmm. everything gets folded into the new entity. Second, Monahan on whether live golf exists a year from now, quote, I don't want to make any statements or predictions. What is in place is to make a good faith effort to look at team golf and the role it can play moving forward. Um, so we're going to take the worst out aspect of live, <laughs> right? Okay. Well, no, the, the, either the team names, some of the logos or the shotgun start would be the worst aspect of live. Wait, I but, only have another time to get a range goats t-shirt. You're saying, cause I need to get I, range goats gear. The range goats may not be long for this world. Mm. Um, and I know that that's going to be hard for you to deal with, but, um, yeah, it is, it is amazing that. They're saying, yeah, the thing that we might want to preserve isn't uh, fun, loudness. Um, the music, the fun, the concerts, that's that. You can, yeah. The team aspect. Yeah, it's team. You get rid of the team aspect. Because <laughs> look, what, where, would, where would golf be without the cliques and the whoever else? I don't even know. <laughs> the aces. Yeah, the four aces. May, long may they reign. Um, it'd be great if they assigned folks to the teams and all of a sudden like Rory stuck with the aces and him and Patrick have to make up and <laughs> they're just all of a sudden there's all this other controversy. Yeah. I don't, I don't know that Rory and Reed were on the best terms. Uh, <laughs> yeah. I mean, we, we can't say, but if, if, uh, if that match at Hazeltine wasn't just theater, I'm not sure they liked each other too much to begin with. <laughs> This may be the, the thing that brings everyone back together. Yeah, I I liked, um, and by liked, I mean thought was really dumb that the official press release from the PGA Tour said, uh, PGA Tour, DP World Tour, and PIF announced newly formed commercial entity to unify golf. <laughs> yeah, I'm sure that's what this is about. This, yeah. is, about, this is about unifying golf because mm-hmm. they're ridiculous i mean the whole thing is ridiculous it's been ridiculous for the last year live itself as an entity was ridiculous the way the pga tour handled this is ridiculous the way certain players who i won't call out but their names either do or don't rhyme with manny me are victory lapping on twitter is ridiculous um the whole thing is ridiculous (laughs) i I don't know there's a vinny something or other that you're after i don't know who (laughs) No, Look, I, yeah, at least I'm I, not I going after it's... Peter Uline or Chase Kepka again. But oh my gosh, Chase Kepka is going to get to apply for PGA Tour status. Mm-hmm. That's the easiest denied of all time. What about, well, actually, well, here's the thing. What if the tail end of the live folks um, are now have to, like, if, if this really, if this merge happens, what if they're like, all right, now you have to qualify back on the PGA Tour? And also, half of them are going to be like, oh, shit, I'm out of work again. This yeah, or think about, <laughs> On, on the other hand, the guys who got their PGA Tour status as a result of qualifiers yeah. leaving, yeah. Um, who are now pushed back to the bubble, like there, there's going to have to be, I think, a, a pretty serious interrogation of like the ways to get, retain, um, you know, the ways to get and retain status because we're, we're going to have just these big questions of like, okay, um, you know, I don't know, pick a, pick a random live golfer. It could even be, you know, not Brooks or Cam because they just won majors, but like Dustin Johnson, I think everyone agrees. Dustin Johnson ought to have a PGA tour card when he reapplies. 
I don't know what the objective standard by which he will get that will be and who else that would let onto the tour and who it would push out. Like there's going to be a big question and maybe it's just arbitrary. Maybe there's like a, a five player board and they say like, yeah, this guy feels like a PGA tour player and this guy doesn't like, I have no idea how they're going to handle that, but there are inevitably going to be some people who are screwed over some people who are mad. It's going to be weird. I mean, look, this this strictly could just come back down to the world rankings, right? We're going to keep live, don't let you do what you do. We're going to let, you know, um, BJ, you know, keep on doing what they're doing with elevated events and everything else. But we're going to get a ranking system now under this umbrella company that's going to make sure everyone's paid fair and the world rankings are, are done in a systematic way where we make sure we get the best players to come to the majors, you know, and they're eligible for everything else that they want to do. I don't know. What would be interesting, though, is Liv should not then be allowed to take, you know, start throwing money back at other players to get away from the PGA events to go on to Liv. I don't, I don't know. It's just, it's just so weird. You almost have to say, hey, we're coming together. Liv goes away altogether. Like, just bring everybody back home, figure it out. I, I, I just, I don't know how the two can live. Um, yeah. Uh, yeah. <laughs> uh, but I don't, know, I don't know how they can coexist. To put it that way. Um, so it's just it's just weird. Yeah. What do you think? Liv has to go away and Jay Monahan has to go away. Each side loses something. Yes. <laughs> That's that part of the, the negotiation. To some legitimacy. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, um, I think what we need is um no more cliques. Uh I think I think range goats can stay and four aces can stay, but no more cliques, um, yeah. no more live the entity. But if the teams want to stick around just as like little like three guys with a group chat or whatever, they can do that. Um, they don't have to shut down their Facebook accounts until exactly. No more Jay Monahan um, if he's not you know run out of town by an angry mob Frankenstein style. Uh, I think I think that'll kind of take care of itself. Um, only events at courses that people care about that I haven't played, um, like live there, there shouldn't be a PGA tour event. I live, live is whatever live was. There shouldn't be a PGA tour event at orange County national in Orlando. Like, like there, 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 there just should be orange County national is a phenomenal course. I know they play college tournament. There's, I know they play, you know, uh, Florida Golf Association tournaments there. It's a solid course. It's not a course that like the top 10 players in the world. You are an elitist snob. You don't, the golf is a game of the people, Will. Golf is a game of the people. The people who play it professionally are not the people. (laughs) So say, so say in a month, all this kind of washes out and the way that it's structured is super beneficial to the players, right? Regardless of where the money's coming from, regardless of, what was said in the past and whatever, but going forward, say the way that, that they figured out makes it so the players feel like they've been made whole, everyone's loves the idea, whatever. It, do you see a world where Jay keeps his position? I mean, and if he's the one that's a driving force to that? I, I have, I'm skeptical that he's going to be around long enough to decide what the go forward or to influence what the go forward model looks like. Like I, He's I think we should be very form. skeptical of like how how what the players are going to let him do moving forward. Like whatever impeachment procedures exist, I would imagine are are in place right now. Yeah, the players are mad, right? The fans that support the PGA Tour over live are mad. The 9/11 families have already released a statement. I just don't understand. I, Did I, they really? They, have, yeah. 9/11 fa- families released. So yeah. Know, yeah, just talking about the hypocrisy and chasing money and all that stuff, you know, the usual yeah. stuff they yeah, yeah. would say. Yeah, like, I mean, you want to talk about people who were exploited, like forget yeah. Rory McIlroy. Yeah, 100%. Yeah. That's Almost- why you can never, at least everyone gets so short-sighted. They, people shouldn't be bringing that kind of stuff mm-hmm. into any of business, right, or sports or whatever. I feel like that never, that never ends well for anybody. Um, not that the folks from the families and 9-11 can't write what they, what they want and they, you know, they can feel, but like a, a sports entity or a business entity shouldn't 
take sides unless it's wholeheartedly kind of exactly what they but don't use that as a veil to get to where you want to go ever i mean it just it just hits too many nerves it's just not the right thing it's just it, it no way that ends well for you ever um so. yeah it's uh it's completely ridiculous um and I understand that this is how you have to present these things, but for Monaghan to come out and say, look, like, you know, there's been all this disruption and distraction and I'm here to fix it. And I'm going to announce a quote, transform transformational partnership that recognizes the immeasurable strength of the PGA tours history, legacy, and pro competitive model. Like what? In what on in on what planet are we living in the same universe? And that's what I think Jay Monahan's handling of this, that's the question that it raises in almost every case. It's uh yeah, it's so ridiculous. I'm interested to see what PGA Tour leadership ends up looking like. Um, because I can't imagine Jay Monahan is long for this position. Uh even even his quote, by the way, where it was like, I, I know the things I said were controversial and I, I feel and I seem like a hypocrite, but I was going off of information I had at the time. But again, when he brings in the things like the 9-11 families and this and that, like, well, now you're not going off of information at the time. You're going off of you're, you're almost making it you're politicizing it, which you should never do. Um, and I, I just I feel like that stuff's going to be hard for him to shake ever. Um, so I don't know. Uh, it's gonna be an interesting couple months, say yeah. the least. Yeah. A lot of pissed off people. The moral outrage is never gonna stand up to scrutiny once you start yeah. talking to everybody and everyone's two degrees from somebody that's corrupt, some sort of corruption. Every corporation does business in these places. It's just it just it had to collapse. And and the more of that get exposed, the more the more that started, you know, it was like always like at the beginning, it was PGA Tours held here, Liv was here. And slowly over the past few months, it's been going like this. It's like, hey, wait a second, you guys do a lot of bad business with a lot of bad actors too. Yeah, and I mean, for, <laughs> for the PGA Tour to maintain this partnership with the DP World Tour, when the PIF, which is the thing that runs Liv, is... The biggest investor in DP World, like it never, yeah. it never made sense, and we've we've called this out on prior episodes. Um, and that's why, as you pointed out, like the moral posturing mm -hmm. was so ridiculous. And I understand that hindsight's twenty twenty, and I don't want to uh, speak in a way that shortchanges that fact. Mm -hmm. But it's really easy. If there's even like a 1% chance that you can be swayed from your position by something that the group you're talking about has an unlimited amount of, um, just not to say certain things. Uh, yeah. And there are a lot of people around the PGA Tour, Jay Monahan appears to have been chief among them, who... Mm -hmm failed to exercise that kind of restraint and there would have been if the pj tour had handled this differently from the beginning and said look we're just going to out compete them or here's why we think our product is better or this is still where the best golf in the world is played or like you're going to be able to watch our product and not theirs any of those things then this could have been totally fine. And they could have come out and said, you know what? Um, we feel like we've been putting on a great product, but it was important to us to have all the best players in the world together. And this is the thing that achieves that. And that would have been totally fine. But that's not what they did. Instead, they took this ridiculous angle about how, you know, Brooks Kepka must love terrorism or whatever what they were saying boiled down to. And now they look like hypocrites and uh, they alienated what seems to be a huge number of their players in the process. And for what's supposed to be a, a player led organization and at least a player focused tour, like man, some people who aren't golfers really mess this stuff up. I, I'd love to, to see the numbers at the end of the day too. If they're, if they're going to put in the billions of dollars that they're saying over X amount of years, What's that going to look like? How much of that money is actually driving all of 
the PGA at that point, right? Because I know the PGA will still have its own money from sponsorship deals and from other stuff that's going on and there'll be separate entities. But at the end of the day, how much of that is now the controlling factor of what the PGA is going forward? Um, I don't know, it's just a really interesting concept. Like we've never had, um, you know, a sport like this take such a left-hand turn so quickly. Um, I don't know, it's, it's, I don't really know what to think. I, I mean, I know, I know it, it, hopefully it's good for the players. It's tough to criticize the Saudi money when it's, when every corporation in the U S is somehow shape or form using Saudi money. I, I don't know enough about any of that stuff, but, um, but at the end of the day, I, I, it just, it puts us in a real awkward spot yes. or not us, but to put the PGA in a really awkward spot going forward. Uh, I feel like they're not in control like they used to be. Yeah. Self-awareness is so important and, and there's no one had any of it in any of this. And if Jay lost the players, he's, he's lost his job. Yeah. yeah. And it certainly seems like he did lose the players. Although I don't know, he, people have come back from worse. I assume this, uh, this, this must be one great competition model that they come up with. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah. This is going to be the greatest thing. Since <laughs> hey, if you make it to the first tee, million dollars. <laughs> <laughs> Guaranteed. Exactly. Um, yeah. So, I mean, there's just so much more to come on this stuff. We have no idea how it's ultimately going to be resolved. Obviously, if you're anything like me and you're rooting for chaos, there's a whole, uh, you know, process of this moving through the Department of Justice and antitrust regs that you're still eagerly looking out for um, because that's exactly the layer that this needs. Um but let's get back to uh, the things that matter here at the end of the day, which are the one club short events coming up in July and the quality of golf that we are each playing right now. Because at the end of the day, like who's tuning in to hear what we think about the massive changes in the world of the professional golf that we all consume every week and not the uh, like five over front nine I played at Clifton Park in Baltimore City uh, the other evening. Like, at, come on. We, we know what people are coming here for. And for the record, we have not merged with anybody publicly. Um, <laughs> there's been a lot of speculation about us, um, especially with uh, the uh, local deli down the street. We have not merged with them or any other entity. Uh, <laughs> and that may change at any given moment, but I will not tell Glenn and Will about it till it's done. Um. <laughs> and I don't, I don't have uh, any control of this business uh, would be the, the precise way to say it. Huh? But um, I will say that any potential partner or merger candidate who can offer me pastrami sandwiches is <laughs> immediately higher on the list. So, um, so you know, for any... Bought. For any local deli that is listening, and I hope many of you are, um, I personally can can absolutely be bought, and I would never accuse you of getting your beef from a farm that engages in unsavory farming practices, because I'm sure that many of the delis that I uh, buy from are are involved in the same things, and I would not want to be caught looking like a hypocrite in such a way. Yeah, clip this, Glenn. <laughs> I love merging with tuna sandwiches. That's all I'm saying. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah, it doesn't have to be just meat. We got pastrami, we got tuna, we got smoked mm -hmm. salmon. Um, I mean, all manner of things. If you're a cheese <laughs> shop, um, you you'd be a nice compliment. This is really <laughs> taking a turn. <laughs> Glenn, how's the game doing? Well, we uh, went out and played Friday, and I woke up and I told my wife, I don't know, I just don't feel like I'm going to play today. Like, I don't, I don't feel like – I woke up and I didn't feel like playing for the first time in a long time. I don't know why. And as Craig will tell you, I struggled. And uh, we just ended up making it a big practice session on Friday. So then uh, on Saturday, I went to my, my happy place. I went down to the Trump Ferry Links there by the, uh, the Whitestone Bridge. And Very nice. They got a deal of $60 for all the balls you can hit in four hours. They've got grass. They've got good balls. They've got a nice driving range there, a good short game area. So I went back just working on the basics, good setup and turning through. So I'm I'm looking forward to my next round. Glad to hear it, Craig. What Which about hopefully you? will be Thursday night, Glenn. I'll need you in that league competition. By the way, yeah, I'm, gonna, I'm I'm 
pretty sure I could, I'll figure it out. Because <laughs> uh, I just found out one of our teammates. So Glenn and I just joined a Thursday night league um, and they changed the teams up. We're on the same team this week. But one of <laughs> if Glenn doesn't show up, we're a threesome. And, the, and the other, one of the other players just came off shoulder surgery. So he's basically swinging with one arm. <laughs> That's good. Um, That's and good. it's me and Kevin against the, the world. So, um, <laughs> yeah, I'm going to need you, buddy. All right. I'll be there. Good luck. Good luck. I'm uh, headed down the shore, as the New Jerseyans say, nice. uh, this which weekend. Which is north of you? Which, yeah, which is headed, north headed of up me. the shore. So I'm headed up the shore, but I don't think that is a phrase that exists. That shirt never yeah. made it. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Um, playing, playing on Saturday and Sunday this weekend. Uh, Where are you playing? I, uh, Tavistock Country Club outside Philly and Union nice. League National uh, down in Avalon. So excited about it. Um, mm -hmm. Shout out to my friends, Ryan and Rafa, whom I'll be <laughs> playing with. Uh, thanks, Ryan, for the invite. Um, and I'm coming off three birdies and 15 holes uh, the other day. Hey. So uh, that's three more birdies than I expected to make. Uh, the greens were rolling at about a, a four and a half. So I don't think it'll quite translate, but um, you know, two of them were tapping. So I think those do translate. Um, we'll see how it goes. I, 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 my expectations are low, so it would be hard for me to disappoint myself. Yeah. You should never, uh, yeah, I say you should never be disappointed. I almost punched a hole through my cart the other day on the second hole um, because because I hit such a horrible shot. So I, it's a uh, frustrations are real, man. I get it. I'll also say, um, so I had only played uh, two rounds before this round I played on Sunday. I had only played two rounds since Christmas, and the one I played around Christmas. I was in North Palm Beach, Florida, and I was in the left rough, and I toe shanked a ball that hit my dad in the head, which was not yeah. good. <laughs> <I'll> be <honest. laughs> and then in the next round that I played, I was in North Palm Beach, Florida, again on the 13th hole of the golf course I was playing, different golf course, toe shanked a ball, hit a guy in the knee. So um, people should stand... Now I'm hitting my microphone because I'm uh, gesticulating wildly. People should stand behind me when I'm when I'm hitting golf balls is the lesson that I learned. But I broke the trend. I did not hit anyone to my knowledge. I did lose a ball. I can't technically guarantee that it didn't hit someone. But to my knowledge, I did not hit anyone in my round on Sunday. I'm hoping to continue that trend. If I if I can continue that trend, that's my bar for not being disappointed. I played at a place the other day. Um, in Jersey, Essex Country Club, beautiful course. Um, and it was uh, really, it was tough. It was windy and they, they were layered, uh, or, sorry, tiered greens all over the place. So it was really a hard course. But they have one hole where if you're not paying attention, there's cars that come in and out, but it's blind. So they, right from the tee box, you've got about 75 yards and cars coming up the driveway into the club um and you don't see them coming so if there's not a caddy there to tell you to to go ahead and swing or not like people are getting i would imagine people get you know cars gotta get drilled with with these you know drives coming off the tee box I, and i was shocked i was thank god the guy was there because i don't think there's like even a stop sign to get cars to slow down so they're going through you don't see them i don't know i know there's a lot of courses that have something like that but that was one of the first ones that i've ever had to hit it's nerve-wracking like you just you almost like want to just get up and hit get over with and and move on just you know i can't yeah. pay a new car for a new car that's terrifying i yeah. uh i might just skip that hole <laughs> yeah me too i i hit quickly um and just yep it's perfect just over the over the road let's just go is that essex county country club yeah yeah that's a good spot it's a beautiful course and it's hard i mean it yeah. kicked the crap out of me um but man it's the course itself is awesome. Yeah. Um, so, a lot I met Mid Am there years ago when I was still competing seriously, and that just, that place always blew me away. Yeah. There were <laughs> spots that, that they had pins. You know, there's some greens that you go to, and, and especially if you haven't played there before, you, you look at it, you're like, man, I don't know. I don't know how I would 
get it to a spot where I feel comfortable on this green because it's like two tiers. Pins are in spots where you feel like if you hit it too far, you're off the face of the earth. And there was a bunch that were like that. Um, almost like the greenskeeper just screwing with you that day. Um, I feel like he was screwing with us all day. Like everything. And it was, the best part was I asked the caddy at one point, I'm like, I'm like, hey, so it's 150 yards. Uh, what, what do you think? Should I be long or short? And he's like, I don't know. <laughs> I'm like, awesome. Great. I'll figure it out. I, I got it from here. Um, Last thing I have is uh, I was at the graduation of the Hotchkiss School in Lakeville, Connecticut um, on Friday uh, for my cousin's graduation. And we're driving onto the campus. And I'm like, man, this place is beautiful. And then I'm like, it's a golf hole. Come to find out nine hole golf course uh, on that campus again a high school this nine hole golf course on this campus designed by seth rayner <laughs> <laughs> like, like I, I haven't played a seth rayner course in my life and here are these kids just <laughs> hanging out at a high school going out of their dorm English. at 6 30 at night to <laughs> to play the seventh hole just ridiculous yeah. amazing <laughs> gotta love it gotta love it all right craig remind us um dates, courses, where can we sign up? What should we be looking out for before we wrap up here? So the, the three that are getting the most action right now are, are, are kind of back to back to back. So um, if you have any interest in, uh, we've got July 17th, we've got Bellport in Long Island. Um, July 31st, we've got Edgewood Country Club in New Jersey. And then August 14th, we've got Rock Rim in, in Stanford, Connecticut. All phenomenal golf courses, but they're filling up really fast. So, um, and they're back to back to back. So don't think you're going to get ahead of it. And it, what seems like it's far away, it's really not going to be. So they're, they're all probably going to be sold out in the next, you know, I would think, you know, a couple of weeks, hopefully. So, you know, get in there, start uh, getting your registrations in, uh, reach out to us. If you got any issues on the website, there's, there's an email information if you got questions or concerns. Um, and, uh, you know, we hope to see you all soon. Looking forward to it. Can't wait. So as always, people can find all that information at oneclubshort.com. Dates, courses, registration, membership. We're very active on Instagram where you can find us. We are at One Club Short. On Twitter, we are at One Club Short and the number one. Normally, as I've mentioned, a place for me to melt down whenever Jordan Spieth is in contention in tournaments. Lately, a place for me to speculate wildly about antitrust law, which is not something I know anything about. <laughs> Uh, so do not take me as a source and authority. I'm just a guy who's literate. That's about it. Um, our podcast is available wherever you get your podcasts with the added bonus of video if you are listening on Spotify. And if you hate podcast apps entirely and demand video, uh, you can catch us on our YouTube channel where we're at One Club Short Pod. So that wraps it up in what I think is the craziest day in golf in an awfully long time and we'll do this again same time same place next week until then thanks everyone for listening see ya